In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to find scientist jobs or really jobs in general through using LinkedIn. And I'm going to show you a few techniques that I have used to make it easier to find the jobs that I actually want amidst all the jobs that are out there. Whenever you go to your LinkedIn, you're going to want to click on LinkedIn jobs. And just to let you know, I know a lot of you try to connect with me on LinkedIn and it's really hit or miss because I almost never use my LinkedIn unless I'm job searching. It's probably not the best idea, but that's just the reality. I have so many socials going on and other things going on that I just really don't use my LinkedIn much. So whenever you come to jobs, this is where you can now start searching for a given job. And a lot of what people will do is start just searching like a job title. So for example, if I want a scientist position in industry, and then I select state. I'm just going to go for United States right now. If you don't know, I'm located in the United States. And so you just kind of get all these positions in scientists. And that really is a wide range of different types of position. Now, if you have made a really good profile, LinkedIn will use the keywords from your profile and try and match you with jobs that are similar and make sense for you. And it can even, it will even sometimes give you like a notification saying like this job matches your profile, but it's going to try and find a position that is going to match well to you. So you can see I'm getting analytical, especially if you've done previous searches, even like chemistry is what it's mainly giving me, but it's really just like science in general, right? And so what the difficult thing is with this is one, you're limiting yourself by a job title and the job that you might be looking for might not have the job title you expect. And then the second thing is, is you're going to get a lot of jobs that are not related to the jobs you actually want because they're not what you're actually looking for. They just have the same title of that. And this is really clear if I was to search something like data scientist, which right now, like my technical title, even though I am a data scientist, is senior research scientist. So if I had just been searching data scientist, I actually would have missed the job that I currently have, even though I found my current job on LinkedIn. So if I'm searching data scientist, you see that I'm getting lots of different types of data science here. And data science actually means different things to different companies. You have no idea what they're going to expect you to know, what you're going to be working on, any of those things when you just type in a role. So what I would recommend typing in is always search techniques over positions or titles. And this is because LinkedIn is just a search engine. It is searching the title and it is searching the description or the about the job section you see here to deliver the best results. So if you really want a job working with liquid chromatography, you want to type in LC or liquid chromatography. You don't want to type in chemist. So if I did that, if I did liquid chromatography, and I'm just going to do LC right next to it, and I'm going to hit search. So now you can see I'm getting specifically jobs that are working with liquid chromatography. So this is LC, and it has liquid chromatography in it. If you look at this one, it's a mass spectrometry position, but somewhere in it, it has to have LC in it. Yeah, so LCMS. So think about the keywords of the job that you, like your dream job, what are the keywords you would want in the description? If you really want to be working with like serum or different types of analytical tissues or different types of analytes even. But now if I look for something like LCMS, you can see that I'm starting to get a lot more different types. So this is like a proteomics one. LCMS, a lot of different types of things specifically focused on LCMS. But you also see that these have a lot of different titles. So senior scientist is a comma one, mass spectrometry scientist, junior chemist, scientist method development, lab support scientist. So you see that there's a lot of different names and you can eventually search these names. But just searching the actual techniques that you want to be performing instead of searching the titles that you want to be doing. So if you're in like biology and you really want a job that you're going to be doing Western blots, like you're the queen of Western blots, you want to have a job with that. Search Western blot because then you're going to find jobs that include that in it. And usually see, they want you to have the skills of doing a Western blot. 
So because they want you to have those skills, you know that that's most likely going to be a part of what you're doing with your actual work. Another hint here is if you really want to find jobs suited to your education level. So a lot of times if you have a PhD and you're applying for jobs with only a bachelor's, a lot of people won't even look at you sometimes unless you really like tweaked your cover letter and your resume to explain that. So I'm putting in Western blot and to give it the Boolean PhD. And so what I'm getting is basically I'm getting jobs that are asking for a PhD, a laboratory manager position. So what you will need is a PhD in a scientific field. So this can kind of help you start to weed out is adding in these Booleans here. It used to be you could just like do all the keywords. But now it looks like it really wants those booleans in there to help you specifically find that out. So when I was looking for data science positions, I didn't actually search data scientist. I searched the main things I wanted to be working on. So I searched Python and SQL. And when I was looking for positions, I was specifically looking for remote positions. So I'm going to set it to remote. And when I search this, we're getting a lot of different types of positions, and this is going to be a little bit broader, right? So Python and SQL can be done in a lot of things that aren't necessarily data science, but you can see like this one is a senior data scientist. If you are looking for more data science positions, I would really recommend not also including PhD in it because a lot of them are not going to require it, but they will look at you even if you have a PhD as well. And you can look, some of these are senior developers because they would most likely work with Python and SQL. So you might find some different things, but this could also give you a good example if you look down into the, so they have tasks, skills, and requirements. So you can look at kind of what they would expect if you wanted to go into web development with your skills instead of something like data scientists. So this is one way to be able to find this particular positions that you're interested in. Obviously, if you know R but not Python, you want to make sure that you're looking for um, jobs that want R and not Python because it's going to be really hard to sift through them if you're just searching for a data scientist. The other option you have here is to filter by all of these filters here. So in the remote, you can do on-site remote or hybrid. You can look at date posted. So often what I will do is I won't look past the past week because a lot of them are really valid past then. You have experience level, so you can do entry associate. I think this is really difficult when you're talking about like scientists, PhDs, masters, because we're not really entry level. Maybe we're associate, but honestly, I think that a lot of people just don't enter this in. So you might get a lot removed that would be valid things. And then you can look at salary requirements. So if you want 80000 plus, you can filter it to those that are most likely going to give you that amount of money. And then you can also do the company specific and whether there's easy apply. So that means you just have to click one button on LinkedIn. And sometimes it has a little bit extra information to ask you, and then it sends your data over. And there's more filters here. You can also sort by most recent. And then it has these same filters kind of going through here. You can do job type as well, full-time, part-time and all of that. So if I search all of that, you can see now I'm getting a much more specific range of jobs that I would be interested in pursuing. So that's overall how to search on LinkedIn. If you are working on your research to get ready to apply to jobs, check out my resources below on my 30-day research jumpstart guide and my scientific research paper checklist. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.